Hello class, for today's conversation, we're gonna go over how to do auxiliary part two. That's in your packet of drawings, okay? These guys, it's one of the two parts. The videos that are posted on here already are how to do uh, this one. It shows one of them is how to do this one, but using AutoCAD. So what I'm gonna show today is how to do this one hand drawing style, okay? So the first thing that you wanna assess is what are the views that I need? What orientation am I going to use? Is a first angle projection, third angle projection? Where are my dimensions gonna go? So the first thing you wanna do is strategize what you're gonna do. So I wouldn't start with the board and a pristine piece of paper, that's your final copy. Instead, I'd start with the bottom of the handout where if you look at this, I've got a line at the bottom of this, just like I do on every single other drawing, by the way. That's an area for you to sketch your thoughts down here below the line. So in this case, I wanna sketch out what the views will look like without worrying about the dimensions. So I'm boxing it up, the usual, just like when we were boxing everything else up. And I'm trying to assess the views. Just like before, if you need to use colored pencils, by all means do so. Use colored pencils so that you can have a clearer idea of where everything goes. So I'm gonna go down the line on my colored pencils. I'm gonna throw this in a box, or at least as reasonable a box as I can. I'm gonna try to use a, a, a ruler to help me with this. In this case, an angle, okay? So I can assess, let's say everything here, what's, on, what's in green is on top. This is also visible on the top and so is this. Parts of this. Part of this is visible on the top and part of this is visible in the front. Okay, so if I try to keep my, let's see if I can, it's kind of there somewhere. So I'm trying to basically see if I can throw this front view in a quasi box. Then I've got the right side view. I'll keep doing the same pencil. All your vertical lines are vertical. All your angled lines are actually at of all things, 30 degrees. This is what's called an isometric drawing. Not the ISO as in metric, but as a metric drawing, isometric just as three dimensional. Okay? So if I put my, let's see, 30, 60 triangle, this one's a not quite at the 30 mark, as you can tell, this angle goes out. This would be 30, so it would be steeper. So I don't know, this is at some other angle, which I'm not gonna try to figure out. CAD drawings you could do this with, and uh, they do it all the time. But this would be the front of my object. This is the top of my object. I'll use blue for the right side of my object. So this is clearly in the right side view with these circles and this and this shape. Okay, those are in the right side view, but they're also coexist as you could tell. I see parts of it in the top as we saw. And in the right side, I'm sorry, the front view, everything that's 100% only in the front is here but everything else is blended. It's part of another view as well. 
So there's a lot going on here. So the question is, what would the views look like? I'm gonna start with what I think the front is because this is the front. And remember, why is that the front? It's not a random decision that I picked this as the front. It's because I'm respecting the cube. Now there's a bad drawing I did of the cube. Front, right, and top. These are the same rules that CAD follows. I talked about that several weeks ago. So I'm not making up the rules. I'm just following the rules of CAD. I'm making sure I carry them here in hand drawing. It's also the rules for CNC programming, the whole nine yards. So if you discipline yourself to at least operate with this, the rest kind of falls into place when you're trying to learn the rest of the family of software associated with engineering drawings. So down here, I'll, I'll draw what, what I can pull off that front view, which is like a little L. I see this angle, it looks like it's at 45 degrees. Not that it's critical that I draw at 45, but I can. So that's, that's right there. So that's basically what the front view will look like. If I carry my lines up a bit, I'll have an idea what the top will look like. And the top is basically a rectangle with a shape inside of it. It's got two circles back here, two holes. But that's about all I can really pull from it. The right side view, I'm still following my basic rules of how to develop views even when I'm hand sketching. So I hand sketch this to be about this wide. So yeah, I'm kind of trying to make it about the same. Or I've got a 45, so I don't care. I could just use my 45 to get the angle. Which angle am I doing right now when I'm, when I'm hemming and hawing about this angle? What's this angle? What's this? Why am I putting in that 45 degrees? What's the whole point of that? That's, well, this isn't the auxiliary. That's that 45, the miter. Yeah, I called it the miser because I'm cheap. <laughs> that was my name for it. The miser method, the miter method. That way I can start forming my right side view. Even with a hand sketch, I'm using that tool because the hand sketch is going to help me figure out my object. And I can even, it'll also help me figure out like where I have hidden lines, things of that nature, okay? So this somewhere in between is this shape. As you can tell, I'm literally just sketching. I'm not making a big deal about obviously dimensions. I'm just trying to kind of figure out where everything is. There's a hole in here. See it right here? So I did forget about that. So I got to remember this too. I don't know its size exactly, but I know it's tiny. And I know this thing's got a, some kind of arc to it. And it's got a back, which means the arc is repeated. That arc is repeated. Then you have like hidden lines in there or something. It's not perfect. This is just a hand sketch. This is not perfect, as you could tell. If any of you think I'm supposed to sketch perfectly, no. No, no, and neither are you, so don't have a heart attack over it. Same thing here. I've got this shape and then it's hidden lines that go through. Okay. So that's kind of what it looks like. And the whole purpose of this, because of course the next part of your assignment is to put in your dimensions. So your handout for dimensioning which I gave out to everybody, so I'm gonna to have to borrow one from you guys because I don't have one. 
So if I may borrow one from somebody. Is this guy. This was a standard I gave you guys just to have a standard. Literally. There are actual standards out there. ANSI, ISO, there's a JIT. There's a whole bunch of standards depending on the country. There's a German standard. So Great Britain, the whole nine yards. So this one is one of them. This is based off the ANSI with some minor adjustments for presentation. So on this one, we've got the spacing of our dimensions here. See that? So each dimension is 3 eighths of an inch from the other dimension. But the one closest to the part has got a little gap of an eighth of an inch. You never want your dimension touching your object or looking like it is. Just that rule of thumb. So that's why the first dimension we usually say is half an inch away from the part because that's what 3 eighths plus an eighth adds up to, half an inch. So half an inch, then it's 3 eighths for everything else. So the next thing you want to do is assess where are all your dimensions going to go. So when you look at your drawing, some of them are given to you so they kind of tell you where they're going to go. But remember you also have the border out here somewhere. You're going to have the border. So I'll fake out some type of border. So you need to give yourself enough room for everything. You have to decide where you're going to put dimensions. One easy thing that you could see is you got these two over here. So you know you're going to have this dimension and this dimension stacked. So that's basically half an inch plus three eighths plus another sixteenth. If it was me in round numbers, I'd say an inch in my head. I wouldn't quibble over the sixteenth of an inch unless you would like to. I won't, if that's okay with you guys, I won't. So let's hypothetically speaking, we've got these dimensions here. We're not gonna place them sideways that way. We are gonna do them in ANSI style. So I got the three inch, we got the two inch. And so how close do we want to be to the edge? Remember that conversation? Dimensionally speaking, what did we say, about an inch? We want to be about an inch away. So this last dimension, we actually want it to be one inch away from the wall. Okay, keep, please keep that in mind. You don't want to scrunch, you don't want to crowd your dimensions. Now, down here, you can also, let's say up here, you can put your five, um, not your five inch here, you can put this dimension here, which is this dimension, and you can even put your five inch dimension here, which means what? If I got two dimensions here already, I need to give myself how much room on top? I've got one inch, plus an inch. An inch is where the dimensions are occupying. Here and here I need at least an inch. And here and here is gonna be one inch. And then I've got my object. So you're gonna start your drawing with your object two inches in the actual part. Not the dimensions, the part. See that? See that item in green? is going to be two inches in. And if we assume this dimension plan for the top by two inches in from the border. Did you hear that? From the border. Now what scale do we say this drawing was gonna be? Do we even have that conversation yet for this guy? We did for the other one, but not this one. I wrote it on the board. Yeah, I did. So we're going to go over it one more time just to make sure, and then we're going to discuss it. Here's your front view. See that? That's your front view. And the two inches is still there. Now the question is, do we want to box it in two inches by two inches by two inches just for symmetry? I would say yes. So you want this object here to be two inches away from the bottom 
of your border. Not after the text area, not, not get it? But that interior space, meaning when we look at the drawing, this interior space, two inches from the inside line, two inches from the inside line, two inches is from the bottom, two inches from the top. Got it? So with that in mind, and you think about the object, if this object is five inches long and half scale means it's what size? Two and a half. So this is going to be two and a half inches of occupied space, correct? Physical space. You have two inches, two and a half. This guy, three inches, right? So this is also three inches. This side has these dimensions. So you've got these dimensions that you have to put in. You have this dimension that you have to put in, which is uh, the gap. You have the radius that you got, or the dam radius. And then of course, yeah, you're right. You've got the diameter here as well. So you got a couple of dimensions here. You've got this dimension here. And you also have this dimension. So let's say we put both of them. Now, if we have two inches out here, that's one inch to the first dimension two inches total. Are we good? Do we have enough room? Or do we just smush them together if we do the math? So what was three inches half scale? One and a half, correct? So this is one and a half. Two and a half plus one and a half is 2.5, 1.5. We've got 4.0, right? Now we got two inches on this side, two inches on this side, that's another four inches. So now we're up to eight. Now the big question is, how much actual room do we have to work with? <laughs> we have just under 10 inches, about 10 inches, right? So that leaves us how much room in between? Almost two inches. So are we good? Yeah, we're balanced. We're two by two by two by two. Make sense? So when you start your part, you're doing this before you ever start your part. Did you notice that? So when you start your part, how do you start? With sketching, like literally hand sketching, this stuff. So that you can assess where you're gonna place your views. You can't start here. Because then you're going to be like, oh, I'll start my part one inch away from the edge, but then you can't fit your dimensions anymore. Because they, then they can't follow these rules. And you can't put dimensions wherever you feel like it. That's a no-go. Sorry, guys. The shop is going to have your head. <laughs> Trust me. I know that people at my Cormac place and every other place, if they got to look at blueprints that with with dimensions all over the place, they're gonna be like, get rid of this person. They're making my life a, a living hell. <laughs> I need a drawing with dimensions I can work with, right? Yeah, that's, that's a no-go. So you can't put dimensions wherever you feel like it. You gotta make sure they're nice and organized and not in such a manner that I, I know what they say, but you're the, you're the person that did the drawing. What I usually recommend is have somebody else look at that drawing and see if they can work off of it. Nine times out of 10, if you don't check off all the dimensions and you miss dimensions, somebody else will catch it, not you. So what you wanna do when you are gonna start putting in your dimensions, I recommend that you check box them as you put them in so you don't miss any. Got it, guys? Organize the way that you do the drawings. In reality, we don't have drawings to just replicate. We're working from Hi, I would like you to make this product. Can you just go ahead and do the drawings for it and I want everything done? Really? Okay. So they're going to give you something. Or, you know, they're going to say, here, we're going to invent a better pair of scissors. Here's the object. So you're going to have to sit there and measure it out, do actual drawings for it, and figure it out. Get it? You're not going to have something literally done for you. So typically, 
you're putting the dimensions on the drawing for somebody else to build from. In this case, the drawing's done for you. I'm just making you do it because that's what this class is about, teaching you how to do drawings. So I'm handing you everything done already, except for your final project. That's of your own design, where you reverse engineer an assembly. So we'll talk about that next class. Okay? For now, I'm just trying to teach you how to lay things out correctly. So once you have that figured out, this is your notes for your real drawing. Got it, guys? So moving on to the real drawing, the colored pencils have to go away. You did a great job. See you all next class. <laughs> what you got to pull out is the same stuff we worked with last class. You've got the last presentation I did for hand drawings. You have your T-square, you've got your angles, you got a ruler, you got a pencil, and of course the all-important eraser which has to be bigger than anything else you have because we always are erasing and fixing things. If you have an eraser shield, by all means use it. I don't, so I'm going to fake it out a little bit with what I've got. Now we said we're going to go in two inches in, yeah? So I'm going to measure in two, two inches. This is where the part's starting. I'm going to measure in two inches. And notice how I just little did little tickies, two inches. Now the one thing I didn't sketch out was the auxiliary view. That's the last thing I'm going to show you, two inches. So I'm basically creating a generic, light, lightly drawn, now the question is, did I give myself enough room? We're about to find out, right? Where was I measuring all my two inches from? I went from the top, I went from... Did I go from the top? Did I find out if I have enough room between these two objects? Did I? No, I just found out if I had enough room between these two objects, right? Did I find out if I had enough room for these between these two? We'll find out. <laughs> Do you like the way I said that? And what happens if it's if it's a disaster? What's my comment to you? You learn from it. You get to build it again. So did I get really give myself enough room? We're about to find out. Do you notice how lightly I'm drawing everything? Because I'm trying to give myself a chance that if I did screw up, what can I do? Bingo. Hence the reason why I have the big eraser for big mistakes. Okay? So I'm going to box in the views based on the scale dimensions. And we said three is one and a half, correct? One and a half. That's pretty, that's hogging up a lot of room there already. I don't think I have enough room, guys, do you? If this is one and a half, have I given my, this guy any room? How tall is this? This is one and a half tall, so half of one and a half is what? 0.75. So it's three quarters. Uh, guys, I don't think I gave myself enough room. Why am I saying that? We're here and I still haven't put the top of the object. The length of this is two and a half, correct? Because it's half a five, so it's 2.5. So we have a major, major error on my part. Because as I drop these shapes down, now if I put in that 45 degree line, this guy, this, this object that's at 45 degrees, I think we're kind of done. I'm already walking into the next part. And that's what, two inches plus the radius of one, so that's three inches, which means inch and a half. So I've already messed up. So inch and a half is from here 
to there, and obviously that's into the top view. So I can't give myself two inches at the bottom, but do I really need two inches at the bottom? I have this dimension, this dimension, and they're all on the same plane, correct? So I only need half an inch. So instead of two inches at the bottom, I can probably get away with just one inch. So one inch is all the way down here. So if I'm down here, do I have enough room now? Ooh, looks like I have some breathing room. Ooh. Yeah, I think I'm good if I start there. I think I'm good because this started in the correct place. What do we say the height was again? Three quarters, yeah? So we, an inch from the bottom, and now I just need three quarters of an inch. Yeah, we're fine. Because that's right there is three quarters of an inch. Now do you see why I draw lightly? This is my advice. When you start drawing, first thing I want you to do is draw with a gentle, light hand. Do not start with uh, dark lines. Got it, guys? Just start with light lines. Trust me. Because when you have to make corrections, because last time I checked, no one's perfect. I know I'm not. If you are, awesome. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. Uh, but in reality, nobody is. So we're just going to get over that. <laughs> okay? So here we have what will become the front view part of the front view. Here's the right side view. Here's the top view. And then over here somewhere is going to end up being the auxiliary view. All right, guys? Let's put this the 45 line in and see how well this thing works out. What was the length again? Three inches, half of three, which is inch and a half. Yeah, so we're good. This this came out to here, inch and a half. No problem. Cool. Now you're going to ask the question, why did I know to do that? Well, it says it's 45 degrees. So if it's 45 this way, it means this is 90 to this. So we know that 45 from here, that's 45 and 45 connects to make 90 degrees, just like the triangle. These are two 45 degree angles, and that's a 90, straight out of geometry. Pure physical, not physics, just physical. This is right out of the physical world. It's just how geometry is. If I have a 90 degree turn, I got 45, 45, I got 90. Done. End of conversation. If you want to verify with the client, you're welcome to put a note on the side. Presume that it's at 90 degrees at this juncture. That's up to you. Okay? No problem. But that's what I did. So I basically made that triangle. The thickness is half an inch, which means that quarters at uh, half scale, it means that's a quarter inch, yeah? So none of that changes. You know, you're, you're not, just make that a quarter by a quarter. Notice I don't make a lot of lines. I just make a few lines. And then the rest is connect the dots type stuff. Because I'm using a T-square, see that? I'm gonna darken, whoops. Darken this line a bit so you could see what I just did. The front view.
The only lines I darken are the ones that are going to become the object lines. See that? And I make them pop. Yes, I am using a big mechanical pencil. I'm not pulling out a fancy schmancy drafting pencil. You can, I, you can use even one of these. I think I used one of these last time. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Okay? It's nice if you can have all the different thickness lead pencils. That's great. Um, not something I have in front of me. So I'm making do with what I got. One of the other things is there's a defect in the manufacturing process of this particular triangle. It actually has a dip in this piece for some reason, which I don't like. So I'm not going to use that edge. So I, just, I don't want the dip in my paper in my line that I'm about to build. So I'm using an alternate side. See that? Now, what do you do when you don't have an eraser shield but I need to erase lines? Okay, remember you have the cheapest teacher on the planet, so I of course don't have anything. But I do have a ruler with a hole in it. So I can use that hole as my eraser shield and erase inside of it as best I can or hold it up against it see that so an eraser shield is simply a shield that allows me to erase something. It's not just a specific product that I must go out and buy. You can even use a piece of paper. And I have. Got it? So clean up your drawing. So don't feel like, oh, I don't have an eraser shield, therefore I'm just gonna erase all my corners up. No, just use a piece of paper. And then all you gotta do is erase at the corner at a slight angle. And the rest you can use big guy. <laughs> or you can use the big guy the whole time, it doesn't matter. Okay? So you can clean up the drawing without having an eraser fit shield. It's very possible. So when you hear me say, clean up the drawing, you'll be like, but I don't have any, and I'm gonna say, do you remember that video? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, 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 okay, fine. You can use anything as an eraser. You can even use your triangles. Or somebody else's triangles, I don't care. Get it? Cool? Yes. The length of this triangle is this, is the two inches plus the one inch radius. So it's three inches, but half scale is inch and a half. Right, so I, I use that part. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I even have like, the angle like, written down already, but I just don't know how you got um, The other side? Yeah, the other side. Well, when you draw this line, let me erase it, because I'm good at erasing things now. <laughs> So I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a nondescript angled line, okay, from here and I'm just going to draw it out like that, okay. Then I'm going to go back with my ruler and measure precisely one and a half and ticky it. So that's the very peak of my triangle there. And then the other side, if you look over here, the other side is literally, and I'm going to try not to block what I'm doing with my own hand here, is literally that. So wherever it goes, it goes. That's it. No clue where that is. 
And I, if you're trying to say, well, where is that from the edge? No clue. But I did make it 90 degrees. So it's basically 245 angles. And then this part, I just erase away the excess back to my, how to use everything under the sun as an eraser shield when you don't have one. <laughs> okay, cool? Awesome, yes. Good question. All right, next. I do know that the hole in this guy is one inch down. Okay, because that's a one inch radius and that's the center of this. So one inch down, which means it's half an inch and in, in half scale. So it's down here. And the center, I'm gonna actually use my 45 triangle for this. This is my center. So I drew that center line. The hole itself is three quarters, so half of three quarters is three eighths. So I'm gonna measure up three eighths. Ooh, I can't read upside down very well. Okay, there we go. Now notice what I'm doing. I don't know if you see it, but I'm actually hitting, this is three quarters. Okay, and we dropped it down to three eighths. See that? And then I'm actually centering. Because what, if it's three eighths diameter, I want half and half on each side, right? So I'm splitting hair, so to speak, down to that middle piece right there. So I can get it one, you see, it's like one and a half, one and a half. So I get it on both sides. Won't be perfect. This particular drawing is not going to go to a CNC because it's not a digital file. But it's still nice to do it well, do it as accurately as you can, and make the drawing something worth looking at. That one was done wrong. So hang tight. I did that wrong. And you can tell when it's off because it's off. So let's see where it one, two, three. Uh huh. There we go. My pencil was in the wrong spot. The thickness of your pencil has a lot to do how how things will end up looking. So I am working with a thick lead, but I'm still going to make it work. Let's make sure everything looks good. So that's basically not all of it, but somewhat what the front view will look like. I'm missing the whole locations, but I'll get those later after I get the top view and the, the right side view settled. And then we'll deal with the auxiliary view and those elliptical holes that have to be made. How many of you have the elliptical uh, or access to, let's put it that way. You all do have that. Whoops, I just moved my arm there. How many of you have access to elliptical templates? Everyone in the room. Because <laughs> I have them here right next to me. When you can use a template, great. There's nothing wrong with that. There we go. I accidentally moved my, my arm and it caused the line to shift. Okay, so that's the top view. I can see here where this goes, so it's somewhere up here. I can see that the center is somewhere here. See that? I see the bottom of my elliptical right here. I see the top somewhere around here. Now what's the width of this? If it's one inch radius, how wide is it? 
If it's a radius of one inch, it's a two inch width. And half of two is one. So, but we want it centered. So that this thing is one and a half already. So what's the halfway mark of an inch and a half? 1.5 divided by two. You, yes, because when you break it down, okay, that's how you get it. Yep. So you go to the three quarters. So how many of you thought this had not? This class had nothing to do with math. <laughs> it all does. That's correct. So once you accept it and stop fighting it, mm, but you need the practical math, not just all the math. Let's put it that way, though. Okay. So now, you've got templates that I've loaned you guys to use, but what, what's the deal with these templates? They're in what units of measurement? <laughs> metric, remember that? So you need the conversion of everything into metric, so whatever you do has to be converted. So three quarters of, I don't, my phone is being used as the recording device, so can someone do the math? If, if the, um, if it's one inch is the radius, which means its diameter is two inches, half scale is one inch, what's the conversion factor between inches and millimeters again? Is it 24.5 or 25.4? 25.4, there you go. So that's, I'm using 25 because that's what's on this uh, template of mine that I, that I have, so I'm gonna use it, and that's gonna be this one. It's not a perfect solution, but it works. It's not perfect, but it works. Because you're the way I said that, it's not perfect. Why is it not perfect? What do you notice about this template? What's it set to? The 30 degree marks and this is at 45 so it's not a perfect template okay I'm gonna warn you right up front that's my warning to you up front so it's not an ideal setup the back side of this guy is all the way back here it's center ended up being all the way over here so that ellipse back there is going to be pretty um, odd looking where it is somewhere back here okay it's not ideal because I am off on because that's a template I have so I'm gonna go with what I got it's not ideal so the three quarters, the hole that's through it. Three quarters, that's three eighths, right? Three eighths and metric is what? What's three eighths in the metric scale? Nine? I don't know. You guys have to do the math for me because my phone is being used as the recording device. <laughs> huh? 9.5. Yes, I picked nine. <laughs> So that's gonna be right there, nine. Now this is the weirdest one that you're gonna see the hidden lines on this because unlike this top object, this bottom object goes all the way down and on top of it changes shape. Why? Because on here it's at a slanted surface, on here it's in a different surface. So this object won't even look correct if I use the template the right the way that I've been using it. I almost have to turn the template sideways to even remotely catch what this thing looks like in the bottom because it's going to look much more like a finger than anything else. And because of that, it's going to need a different type of um, different size arc so I'm kind of faking it out now that's inside so you notice I'm making hidden lines it's 
It's going to look something like that. It's the weirdest shape. It is. It's the I'm not telling you it's going to be an easy shape to look at. It is the weirdest shape. I was just double checking kind of how it looked. This is about as good as that's going to get with a hand drawing. Mind you again, hand drawing. CAD, different conversation. There's a CAD, how to draw it in CAD video on YouTube. That's why I've chosen to do this one by hand this time. Just to show you how odd this thing is. And when it comes to hand drawings, you're not going to be able to nail it just right because it is a very bizarre appearance there. No joke. Okay? But that's about the oddest view you're ever going to work with. Don't forget it's got hidden lines here. I'll go back before I submit this if, I was, if it was my work and thicken up the outer lines if it was me. Uh, but that's for now, that's what I've got. I've got just your basic geometry. Cleaning up my references. Okay. Holes, what are the top holes? Half inch, right? Half inch diameter, which means they're a quarter inch, yes. And and in the metric system, what's a quarter inch? <laughs> Since all of our templates are in metric. Well, half of 25.4 is 12 point something, so it's six something. Ah, uh, but we learned this in the last class. Can I just drop it down and get the right spot right off the button no what what do I need to drop first location 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 just like with with uh, buying a house right location location <laughs> so half inch by half inch so that means it's a quarter inch right because it's half scale so it's a quarter inch in and the quarter inch in and that's the same this way, quarter inch. And I only drew tiny little tickies. See that? To get to where they go. So I can go a quarter by a quarter. Now you see the center lines extend past the part because that's what I've told you to do historically is your center lines need to extend past the part. It would be nice if they make a perfect plus. It's a plus. Okay, I'll stop. If they make a plus. <laughs> but, you know, what did I say, about six or seven? What are we gonna go with? Six? Okay. So I'm gonna line up those little dots that they give us. So that's that one. That's that one. Okay. Again, these arcs are technically incorrect because the template we have is for 30 degrees. Remember that. Okay. So if someone gets on your case about that, you, you know that that's an understood issue. But you're okay with it. I'm letting you know that it's okay with me because that happens to be the templates I have. So I'm not going to make you go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff. Next, we're going to throw in our, our 45 line. We've got our line straight down. We're going to repeat that, that interesting looking view over here. We know this is a solid line. See how I did that? We know the bottom of the object is here, but we also know that the corners are 
radius corners they share the same center as uh, these holes here and that's half inch above because it's half inch from the top which means a half inch from the bottom because the total front is one and a half so a quarter inch by a quarter inch again the same thing and because I know that there's going to be a side view of that see that I also extend my center lines there Now the arcs again, what do we say, six? Six is for the diameter. But the radius is what? Is the radius gonna be six? No, what's the radius gonna be? Do they tell us? It's a radius of half. So that means it's a diameter of, for our purposes, the diameter is going to be 12. Does, do you understand? Does it make sense? Because it's the radius, not the diameter. So that's why it's double what the circle is, the whole. The bottom, not the perfect, not the best looking little shapes down there, but that's them. Got it? And that's there. And this one is here. And then working at the top, what do we already know? We knew we were agreeing to use which ones again? I forgot. Is that mental pause? 20 something, right? 20 something? I can't remember. What did I say? <laughs> what do I first have to find? The center. So I'm gonna, I'm too lazy to even find the center. I just carry it over from the top view. You see that? You see what I just did there? That's how lazy I am. By the way, that's not lazy, it's being efficient. Because if you're anything like me, when you're having to do one of these, somebody's breathing down your neck, wanting it already. Where's the drawing? I'll have it to you right away. <laughs> I wanted it yesterday, but you only told me about it today. That doesn't matter. <laughs> Sounds like a familiar conversation. You may have just had it work. <laughs> So what do we agree? 25? Was it 25 or 24? I think it was 25 because we had no choice. Yeah, it was 25. So I'm going to measure out 25. And what was that inside one? See how lazy I am? I'm just copying off of here. Was that 12? No. No. Was it, it was 9. Was it 9 or was it 10? 9. And then here it's just hidden lines all the way down. Hidden lines all the way to there. Now here I've got some hidden lines I need to carry over. Because they're here, so I gotta carry them over. I do have to carry them up here as well. But I am lazy and I don't really want to find these centers again. So I'm just going to mark where they are. And I'm going to use the miser method. 
time is money and money is time. I gotta go eat some bonbons. So I'm running out of time. <laughs> so there's that. See how I'm just checking off the different parts? So this hidden line is practically Let's see. Yeah, it's just about. Yeah, it is. But yeah. Oh, I could have been really lazy. They're lined up with these guys. Oh, my God. See? I should have been more lazy than I was. They're right there. Oh, come on, you. There's that hidden line. So this center line's in the wrong spot. I had a feeling it was. Got a little too sloppy there. There we go. Because this center line and this center line match up because they're all a half inch away. Ditto for this guy. Just line it up. It is visually so close to that solid line. This guy needs to get darkened up. This line needs to get darkened up. Lots of hidden lines. So I just line it up. All I do is pull the information right off the top view. I don't have to measure anything. So there are your primary views. Now what's missing is the auxiliary view. So I can get real dimensions off of this slanted face, okay, because I can't off of any of the other views. So this where a little, it gets a little tricky because people always ask me, how much room should you make? And of course, my standard answer is as much as you can. Um, but what does that really mean? You need to give yourself enough room for the view, but not make it look like it left the planet. Uh, typically, your 45, 45's in the way to make this happen to you. First thing you gotta do is erase that. Next, you actually do need a triangle for this. You can't do this one without it. Because what you're trying to do is literally go perpendicular to that view, okay? And you're trying to draw it boom, out, not in space, like totally far away. I know it's like not too close, not too far away. I know it's real picky, right? But somewhere around here is where you want your auxiliary view to appear. And your auxiliary view is the view that's needed to pull the right dimensions off for that one item, this, this one face that otherwise you cannot put any dimensions for in any other view. So you do need to draw it somewhere where you're going to have enough room to give it some justice. <laughs> okay, it needs space. Let me get that t-shirt out. So what, what are the sizes again? So we said one inch radius, which is two inch diameter, but it's half scale, so it's one inch. We couldn't find 25, so we're stuck on with 26, right? Was that how that conversation went? Or do we have, oh, we have 25, because it's 25.4, right? Equals one inch, remember that? So we're gonna put that in here that that way we've got the true shape it looks like a normal circle now it doesn't look like an ellipse anymore see that and that inside hole is diameter 0.75 so it's 3 8 and 3 8 was what 6 is that what we agreed 6 
So that's what's going on in here. Is it six or is it something else? I, I screwed up. It can't be six. Well, six was these guys, right? Yeah. Which was the uh, quarter inch. Three eighths is a little bigger than a quarter. So what should we go with? Seven? You guys tell me. Take 0.375 and divide it by 25. Is it divide by 25.5 or multiply? Who remembers? Do, do, do. Yes, multiply. So take the inch value, 0.375, multiply it by 25.4, and you get? 9.5. 9 point something, yes. So it's 9. Aren't you glad I gave you metric templates? I'm forcing you to convert, convert back and forth. Now, the, there's a couple of different ways to take the following um, line. Here we have a hard line right here because it is a real break right here. It's a corner an absolute corner and you can make a hard line or you could do what I'm going to suggest because I don't want to have to draw the rest of my auxiliary view which is everything behind this shape I if it was me I would draw what's referred to as a break line or a heartbeat or a squiggly, there's a couple of different ways to basically identify that you've broken the view away from the rest of the object because then that negates your necessity to draw the rest of the object. And that should be your number one goal is to not do any more drawing work than you have to. Just like you don't wanna put any more extra views into a drawing than you have to. In this case, Remember the last drawing? I said, oh, you can cut that down and you only need two views. Remember that with the metric drawing? And here I am. I need three views and an auxiliary view. Oh my God. So now all of a sudden I need four views. Get it? So your work goes both ways. Sometimes you can get away with one view. In this case, I needed four views to get all the information down on this drawing. Now, dropping in the dimensions. I'm gonna go through this uh, not too quickly. I'm gonna try to do it slowly. What did I recommend that you do? You check box every single thing as you do it, right? So that way you don't miss anything. But here's the thing you must remember. You start with the inside dimensions first and then you work your way out. You do not start with the outside dimensions. So you do not start with five and three. You start with dimensioning all the little things first and work your way out. Otherwise, you're going to have crossing dimensions, which is absolutely horrifying. You cannot have that. Okay? So I'm going to start back here just to give you a, an example of what I mean. This is two inches, three inches. We got the half inch here. Okay? So my first dimension is half an inch away from the part. So I'm going to make a ticky. My next dimension is three eighths. My first dimension has to be one eighth of an inch off the part. And my second dimension, I only want an extension of about, about sixteenth of an inch. So you notice I drew one continuous line. Okay? Because now what I'm going to do. is I'm going to use my reference points right there to identify where my dimensions will go. But notice I drew a really light line. Because my first dimension extension will be here. My second will be here. My last one will be about an eighth inch away and go all the way to that furthest one. Because then what I'm going to do is then go this way. 
draw a line, give myself a gap, draw a line, draw myself some slender arrows. I'm gonna draw a line, give myself a gap, draw a line, give myself a gap, and draw another line. Arrow here, arrow here, arrow here, three inches. Whoops, I gotta clean in between a little bit. About a, uh, an eighth of an inch tall, guys. Two inches, so neat, neat writing. Remember that first assignment I gave you? Made you feel like you were back in first grade? A lettering and numbering? Now you know why. Now, some people with half an inch, you can either go inside or outside. I don't care. Just make a decision. <laughs> so some people want to debate. I'm like, do what you want. I'm not going to worry about it. So in my case, I'm gonna put it inside. That's where my half inch is. I'm not gonna debate with you whether or not it should be inside or outside, I can care less. Then down here, I'm gonna put a half inch, half inch um, spacing because I've got the dimension for which way this guy goes. The dimension for this one and this one I'm at I'm gonna put the arrows outside as well and write in 0 0.50 inside now some people say oh that's too tight a space blah 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 I'm like fine okay I'll go with you on that and some people say why can't you be a little more lazy Miss sure I'm like okay let's be more lazy let me show you the really lazy way you put 0 0.50 here, and it counts for both. Cool? How about that for lace? Is that good enough? Maybe? Maybe not. Then up here, I've got my next dimension, again, half an inch away from the part. Now you notice I'm not like totally picky about exactly, just I've got it close, half an inch away from the part. And I'm not being real particular as you're seeing me being particular, sorry about that. I was trying to not be too particular. I'm putting in my dimensions, but I'm not being too picky about how much exact room I'm giving it. But I am making sure I get that gap in because it's easy. If you put your ruler right there, it's easy to get the eighth inch gap. You just stop your line an eighth of an inch away from the part. When you drop your ruler, that's why I say dimensioning by hand is actually faster than CAD. And that one's five, right? 5.00. The only thing that'll get you is if your letter style is really horrific. You just have to be patient with how you write letters. Now, my handwriting stinks, but I know to slow down when I'm doing this stuff. Okay? So there's half an inch. This one was half inch away. Was this half inch away? Or did I go too far? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I went too far. I knew there was something wrong there. So how do I fix it? Just do it. I put it in the correct spot. Whoops, ugly arrow. Oof. And I get rid of the previous one and make sure to race down the extension line to the right spot. I didn't write too hard, so it's okay. But that's also why you want a gentle hand. So that's one view. Is it fully dimensioned? Did I miss anything? 
What else should I add there? I got this, X, I got this, X, I got this, I got this. You see what I'm doing? What's next? Ooh, I didn't get that. That's the thickness of the part. I got this one. What am I missing? What am I missing? The whole, the whole sizes. Okay, now this one's gonna be fun. Rule of thumb, you do not send your extension line for your dimension boom, through, the, through another dimension. Got it, rule of thumb when you're hand dimensioning. It's not difficult, we have a lot more control when we're dimensioning by hand than we ever do by CAD. So you always want to position it to the center of your objects, draw a line out. That's your leader line. Doesn't have to be that long. You could drop it to be right about here. Erase the excess. And then, now here's the weird part. Unless you know how to write, like really, really thread, and you know where your lettering's gonna end up, you actually write backwards. Meaning, you start with the last digit first, so you don't scrunch. So this is half an inch, so it's zero, five, diameter, X, four. You write from the extension line out. That way you don't scrunch. So it looks like, I gotta fix that five. I don't like the way it looks. There we go. <laughs> that way it comes out neat. All right? Don't try to do four X diameter five and then figure out where to put the arrow. You can do it the other way. But that's my trick of the trade to you. Yeah, I used to have to do hand drawings. Back in my day, we had to. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I leave the cane in the closet. <laughs> now, but knowing how to hand draw, these little tricks are nice. Because if you have to hand sketch something real quick for somebody, and it looks good, like this, they're, gonna think, they're going to think much more highly of you than literal chicken scratch. Okay, guys? So that's one view. You can do the rest of the views. And then when it comes to this guy, this one you're going to have to use probably the other triangle to get a reasonable position. Again, position to the center line. Dren draw the extension line. The arrow, put a little horizontal tail to it, like that. And then, how do I write this thing again? I forgot. Do I 1.00R or do I start with R first? R first. R, zero, zero, point, one. Get it? Ditto for the other position. You can actually pick any angle. You just want it to, to look nice. You see that? See how you can just pick a spot? Whatever you pick, your next thing is just put the horizontal there. So of course I picked both of these to be aligned with each other just to look neat. And this one is diameter 0.75. If you're from Europe or anywhere else, you would wanna put a little line in there for the seven. Try to resist doing that, please. But if you do, I know why. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now, some people, it's six of one, half a dozen of another. They want to put, they ask the question of me, and I, and I tell them it's, it's up to you where you put this last dimension. But it's okay 
if you want to put it in this view, meaning this dimension, which is the dimension of the gap, like where this is, where is the, um, this object from the end. You can't do that, but your, your physical dimension still has to be horizontal. You can't angle it. Okay, guys? And again, every time you get a dimension in, scribble it off, scribble it off, scribble it off, scribble it off. It's going to be like, oh, no, I got them all. <laughs> or what is it, that game where you scribble everything off and you get them? Is that Uno or is that, I don't know. Huh? Bingo! That's it. Bingo! See, I knew it was scribbling something. I just don't remember the game until I don't play it. So basically, you deduct everything until you get the end game. Now, the one I will show you, sometimes people get confused. How do I put in 45 degrees? I get that question a lot. And yeah, it's true. I'm going to tell you to put it inside. And you'll be like, oh, but it's inside the part. I don't like it in there. I'm like, I understand, but it's okay. That is where it belongs. But here's how you would do it neatly. Okay. You see how I took the circle template? You see how I took the circle template? I'm picking a circle I like that is aligned and aligned so that the center of this intersection is where I'm going to put the following arc. Okay, but I'm going to find one that I like the most. So I'm a little picky, so I'm looking for the right one because I do need to give myself enough room to write my numbers. So I pick that. 45 degrees and I put my arrow up here and my arrow down there. That's it. But I use the circle template. Don't try to do it by hand because it's not going to look right. I know that for a fact. I've seen it enough times. I've tried to do it myself. It's no good. Keep life simple. Makes it look good really fast. And it takes only a few minutes. Like I told you, I'm lazy. So I'm looking for the quick way to get stuff done, but look good. Get it? Get it done, but look good. Cool? You're not going to have a ton of questions until you try to do this. I'm trying to tackle most of them like up front, but it, the rest are going to come as you're doing it. And again, every time you get a dimension down, scribble it off. Bingo! There, see I did it right this time. Cool? And that should end this video unless you have something like last time we caught a mistake with the other video. We caught it after the talk. So anything I'm missing before we move along? Because you know me, I never make mistakes. <clears throat> God, I couldn't say that straight. Sorry. Did I miss anything? Damn. <gasps> yeah, I did. Did I miss anything? The grin on my face says I did. <laughs> okay. I have these holes. The hidden lines are here, but they're missing here. Okay, so don't forget. But what did we learn the last time? Do I need to do that whole projection view or do I just, I have them right here, right? Remember that? So this is hidden line, hidden line. And that's a really tough center line, but there it is. All right, over here. They're not perfect, I'll tell you that. I know that. Hidden line. And that's kind of a weird center line. Yeah, they're not perfect. I know that. I could tell you right now because they're off. they seem to be off a little bit. Probably because of this shape. 
because they should align to the sides. They should technically, both sides should technically align right to the sides. Cool? But it's a hand drawing. If this was CAD, it's a different conversation. I'd be much, much more picky. But I'm not because it's a hand drawing. Now, remember down at the bottom, as far as your name is concerned, how do you do that again? I recommend you pick a good spot, like right below everything where it says that. Draw a line. Pick below that. What did I say? What size? About an eighth inch or so, roughly. About an eighth. About an eighth or so. Whoops. Let's line that up. First initial, last name, block lettering, project name, what was this called, auxiliary part two? Now, remember how I took away that reference here about the, um, what was that called? Um, third angle projection, remember that? You can hand draw the two little circles. Oh God, that makes me cringe. Okay, <clears throat> I recommend you use your templates. <laughs> because obviously I can't draw a circle. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't trust myself. So I'm going to draw a circle, draw another circle in that circle that looks uh, reasonably complementary. There you go. I'm going to draw my little center lines because what am I drawing here? What's, what is this? this um, image that I'm drawing. What's it what's it referring to? Anyone remember? Say again? Yeah, it's letting us know that we're doing a third angle projection drawing visually. Remember that handout I gave you guys? I don't have any more because I handed them all out. Who's got that one that I could borrow real quick so I could show it on the on the video. This guy. Remember this guy? First angle versus third angle projection. You want to make sure you identify this. Got it? On your drawing. Hand draw it in is fine. What's the scale on this again? One or two. And revision is for when you revise the draw. Okay? This is not the finished drawing, but the rest of the dimensions you'd put on. This is about a one hour and 23 minute video at this point. So I think you know what, what you should do next. You know how to do it. Everything that I could think of, I covered as far as the typical issues. And I think we caught all the little things, the mistakes that needed to get fixed. So this is going to end, sorry, this is going to end this video. Have a great day.